English Woodlands Timber uh, as a company that's been here on this site since 1942. It started cutting beech uh, as part of the requirement for material in the Second World War. A lot of the beech went to the Lee Enfield Rifle Company. Over the years, the company's retained its love of cutting English hardwood, mainly oak, ash, chestnut, and some other minor um, species like walnut. It's harder and harder to find English hardwoods. Some people have a perception that they are endangered or they shouldn't be cut. But in fact, our cutting of English hardwood is a just a natural part of the forest management process. What we look for is trees, which have a nice sound heart, a beautiful colour, and so when they're cut and they're made into a table or a chest of drawers or a beautiful door frame, that the customer gets a beautiful piece of wood. So all the timber we buy comes mainly from private woodlands and owners will ring us up when they have a parcel to sell. Uh, we'll also contact them if we have any particular uh, requirement. When we buy the log, uh, we identify it with this uh, tag, which in this case is yellow, but if different estates will have their own different tag. And that allows us to trace the log right back to the forest where it came from. It makes a nice connection with um, the final product. So the whole log is called a bull. So a one inch bull will be kept here for one summer and then it would be ready to kiln two inches would be two summers and three inches, so forth. As you cut the log, you get different grain patterns uh, in the same tree. So at the top of the log, these two would be known as crown boards. And in the center, these are center boards. In ash particularly, you get a beautiful swirly grain pattern. And we have customers that will come specifically for that pattern. Uh, in elm, if you were making a traditional Windsor chair, the seat bottom, they love the um, grain, the natural swirl of the grain. If you ever go into an old Elizabethan house, you'll often see panel, oak panelling, and you'll see that they specifically will use medullary ray quarter sawn oak because it was a demonstration of wealth. One bull, but many different um, uses and um, applications of the timber. When we take the log, we'll then cut through and through and we introduce a stick which separates each individual board and allows the air to just gradually uh, circulate over the surface of the board so that it starts to dry. Our aim is to reduce the moisture content in this form to about 25%. When it's at 25%, we can then take it to our kilns uh, and that will bring the moisture content down in an artificial environment so that it can be used uh, and manufactured uh, to put in people's houses. We're able to keep a track of our stock through identifying with tag numbers each ball and then board. We have on our site a, a stock search tool uh, which they can click onto. Fine tune their search so when they get their search result, the result is more in keeping as to what they require we would eventually like to photograph everything so that having a photograph and a stock system like we have will mean that um, the customer can make their own mind up remotely, uh, make their decision remotely and then give us a call when they're ready to either come in and visit or to purchase online and they will see the defects and so on that we in the joinery trade would not probably normally accept but for a, for a customer that's looking for a very artistic or rustic type of timber, it will be far more in keeping to what they require. They won't need to make that visit three or 400 miles to say, that's the board I want. Certainly over the last few years, there's been a great trend in using homegrown timbers and timbers that normally would have been not really fit for a normal joiner's work, which will mean hopefully that um, a greater selection of timbers will get felled Timber that possibly in the past might not have been acceptable for joinery would be then used for furniture than really for firewood. So a far better use of the timber. Once the timber is dry enough in the air dry yard, uh, we then take it straight into our kiln and they'll be in there for up to five or six weeks. 
we heat the air up, uh, the moisture is released and then it's extracted through a dehumidifying process. The timber comes out of the kiln and then we bring it in and we put it into stacks of its uh, thickness and species. When the orders come through from the office, the process then is either I, myself or Wayne will go through selecting the timber to, to the customer's orders. We've had a customer requested some elm. We're just going to go up there and select some elm boards for the job. Gentleman wants a tabletop. Eight foot, isn't it? Seven foot. Seven foot. 40 inches uh, wide with a swirly grain or pippy detail. Seven foot up to that. Uh, that one will be fine. I'll go inside. Yeah. Right, swirly grain. It'll either go eight, as it is in its raw state or we'll go over to meet fill in the machine shop for processing to whatever cut size job it is. I'm the longest one here at 37 years. So I've seen out quite a few bosses in those. So after all that time, they've put up the shed in my name, Peter Shed. <laughs> after Peter has uh, picked the timber, the timber comes over to me. The first process would be to put the timber through the uh, straight line edger, which is a circular saw of a mechanical feed, uh, which sort of roughly cuts the timber to size, put it through the, the Vinig moulder, which is a six-head moulder, uh, which planes it all round or can do profiles such as tongue groove, uh, ship that. The waste product is extracted, it goes into the briquetting machine, uh, it's compressed into briquettes, uh, and then that's bagged up. Make sure the quality's up to standard, uh, and then wrap it and get it ready to go. Even though we're cutting old trees down, we have to be very careful about where we source them from. Um, we can't cut a tree down unless it is licensed to cut uh, through the Forestry Commission. And often the woods that we cut them from are themselves within 20 year management plans. So we can ensure that the resource that we're cutting is always replenished. We manage about 10,000 acres of uh, private woodland and are very proud to be able to plant the trees that someone in a hundred years time will be able to cut and still make uh, some useful furniture 